Hey, what's up, Psyacuse? Excuse the mess over there. I will be putting images over here. That's why I'm here. Uh, wait a minute, I'm not Thaikusk anymore, I'm God of Uwu. I thought that name would be funny, I don't know if it's actually funny though. Oh no, water got on the paper. Ooh. Today we're gonna be talking about Logan Paul, aka our favorite YouTuber, and astrology. Because uh, I just want to know how things correlate with astrology sometimes, and if there is an, if there is a correlation. So I really question why does Logan Paul get into all get into drama, like big drama, in January, like in the beginning of the year. It's very bizarre that happened twice. So I thought I'd look into it, and from what I can tell, it is very much because of Saturn and Pluto. If you don't know, these two things have entered Capricorn and they're going to be conjunct in 2020 which will be a whole entire thing. There are plenty of videos about it, doomsday videos, and the, it's not going to really be doomsday videos and you know all that fun jazz, you know, blowing it out of proportion, being realistic about it, you know. Obviously bad things will happen but bad things will happen every- bad things happen every single day let's be honest. <laughs> anyway so with that being said, you know, Saturn and Pluto both in Capricorn. What is in Capricorn for Logan Paul? Well, his part of fortune, 14 degrees, and his ascendant in late degrees, the late degrees of Capricorn. Thought that should be noted. So in 2018, obviously, you know, it's speaking of part of fortune, that is, you know, your fortune, you know, the asteroid that will tell you what you'll find success in, you know, and that's, for him, that's 14 degrees Capricorn in the 12th house. Pluto's conjuncting that, well, transit Pluto is conjuncting that. What does that mean? Well, vast changes into the things that will bring him success. This happened in 2018, during the first incident. So obviously, you know, he was pretty shaken up. Jupiter was conjunct his midheaven, you know, transit Jupiter was conjunct his midheaven, and transit Mercury was conjunct his natal Jupiter. So obviously communication was blown out of proportion and his public presence was too. And if you don't know, he is a Pisces, Mercury, and an Aries moon. And his Aries moon is squaring his Ascendant and his Uranus and Neptune. So this creates someone who sometimes cannot form thoughts completely unless if they really think about it. You know, that's what Pisces is like. And especially with a water-influenced Mercury, you know, thoughts are going to be fully there unless if you really sit down and be like, okay, how do I get down to these details? And especially with Pisces, Pisces, you know, the details are all over the place and it's sometimes hard to pin them all together. This might not be completely uh, good with an Aries moon because Aries moon is very impulsive. They sometimes act on feelings and are just like, hey, you know what? This is what's gonna be right and I'm gonna go after it. Because Aries is like that, you know? Aries is kind of stubborn but not totally stubborn, that's Taurus. Um, Aries is just more like, I know what's right, I'm gonna go after it. If something happens, I'll be okay in the end and I'll save myself. So who cares? So with that energy, especially, you know, the moon, like it's, you know, partially being expressed through his personality because his ascendant, the first house, that starts off your housing system and that is how you appear to acquaintances. You know, this is being expressed through that a lot. Plus, you know, Uranus Neptune there, this is being expressed at random and probably not fully thought out. So with that being said, you know, the Aries moon drive and the Pisces Mercury thought process together may create some uh, not really good decisions and that's probably what led up to most of, well, these two incidences especially, probably, because obviously Logan might have to learn how to sit back and be like, okay, gotta get everything together. <laughs> um, and, and I don't really think he like got together in both of these and especially this one because it has been really blown out of proportion with these major Jupiter aspects that I really noted. Now let's go on to 2019. <laughs> um, this one's kind of funny in my opinion. I think this is, this wasn't meant to be harmful. I think 2018's was meant to be a little edgy. But this is, um, I don't think this was meant to be you know, edgy or harmful, in my opinion. I just think this is more Pisces, Mercury, Aries, Moon <laughs> teaming up together to be like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna look past a few things and I'm gonna say something. And that's something, you know, was a little off-putting to some people and has offended some people, which is, hey, it happens. And with that being said, the 2019 transits that I thought were pretty um, relevant uh, transit Saturn conjunct, you know, his part of fortune, 
um, you know, Saturn slows things down, takes things away, teaches us some hard lessons. This is conjunct by three degrees in what he's being successful at. You know, I think trans Saturn's like, you made a bad thonk, that was not a good idea. And I'm going to affect you a little bit. So I think that's pretty important to note. Uh, tr and obviously transit Chiron and transit Mars conjunct his Mercury. I've been talking about Pisces Mercury. And this is in his second house, by the way. So this is affecting his money. <laughs> this is affecting his self-esteem. That energy is a second house. You know, I think this is just a bad thonk with, you know, Aries Moon and Pisces Mercury working together. And um, Chiron's like, what's up with that? You know, I don't know much about Chiron, I'm gonna be honest. So I'm just gonna leave someone in the comments to say, yo, Sam, you're dumb. This is what Chiron's like. And um, with Mars, obviously, impulse. This is his ru the ruler of his moon. Mars is ruled by Aries. Mars is pushing Pisces, his Pisces Mercury to be like, okay, I don't need to sit down and really think about this. I just have this one thing. I think it's a funny idea. I'm going to go with it, <laughs> right? It's, it's kind of encouraging. That transit is encouraging his, um, you know, Aries moon. <laughs> Which I think is kind of important um, because I think it does lead into, I guess, impulsive behavior. And I think that's in both, you know, Jake and Logan. Um, Jake's, uh, obviously, I think his moon's in the 12th house of Taurus, though. So I think he's kind of more calm behind the scenes compared to Logan, which, it, you know, his moon's in the third of Aries. And especially with the third, also, you know, third rules over communication, siblings, you know that realm. So obviously he's going to be like communicating, you know, these, you know, Aries moon impulses. And these impulses are not going to be very like thought out through his Pisces Mercury. So um, sometimes that leads to him getting to some drama and um, it's, it's wild to think about. So, you know, especially, you know, the Mars conjunct natal Mercury thing, you know, transit Mars, natal Mercury, uh, you know, saying something stupid on a podcast. <laughs> That's basically it. That's all I really have to say right now. So I'm just gonna move back here and just talk about his birth chart for a little bit. His moon and his Mercury may go after things without really thinking about them, which hey, you know, people do that. And so I think that is a major thing, even though it's not a transit thing. I think it's just a part of him that I think should I should note and it shows in his chart. Uh, I want to talk about his, um, you know, midheaven, his 10th house. It is in 22 degrees Scorpio, plus Pluto's loosely conjuncting that. Those things in the 10th house, he's gonna have some influence, you know, 22 degrees Scorpio is a critical degree of the fixed signs, and Scorpio is a fixed sign. So this midheaven is, it is a notable thing in his chart, plus his midheaven ruler, you know, conjunct it, really says this is, this is my public persona and I am very sure of it. So that is like pretty interesting. And Pluto in this case is not like the Zendaya Pluto, I'd like to call it, because Zendaya is also Scorpio midheaven. But the thing about Zendaya is she's known for being the empowered, you know, find your power Scorpio midheaven. And obviously there are is the power-hungry Scorpio Midheaven. There's the, what I like to call Megan Fox, Scorpio Midheaven, um, you know, the, the appeal trademark. And, but this Scorpio Midheaven does not apply to either of these, in my opinion. It's more of like a constant destruction and a constant change in public it, um, relevancy and opinion, in my opinion, which is kind of weird because usually Aquarius and Aries is known for that. And, you know, Jake Paul is in Aquarius Midheaven and he has the same thing, but this is like really weird. Scorpio's taking on this role because, you know, Scorpio's a fixed sign. Uh, but, you know, how Pluto is like reacting with his Midheaven, it's just like, okay, you know, he's the good brother and, you know, he does something, he's like, oh my god, he's like, 
pretty, he's like the bad brother, he just like goes all over the place. And it's pretty interesting. And I guess the difference between Aquarius and Scorpio, like looking at both of the Paul brothers, is that I guess we, I guess we kind of like, I don't know, I guess we're drawn to look at Logan's um, career more, in a sense. Because there is a point where we thought he was the good brother and we had a strong opinion about that. I think that's the difference between Scorpio and Aquarius is Scorpio's more intense. Obviously, we're like, we have an intense opinion like, oh, Jake Paul sucks. And then, you know, Logan does something stupid and we're like, oh, and then, you know, we, we don't like Logan. You know, I think that's kind of the difference. And, you know, with Jake, we kind of didn't really have the strong opinion. As, as like, you know, a public sphere, we didn't have a strong opinion on him. We're like, okay, you're just some weird Disney Channel dude. It's like, whatever. And he does something stupid and we're like, oh, okay. And then he does something, okay. And he does something stupid and it's like all over the place. So we can't really form that opinion. Like, we don't really see Scorpio take on this like Uranian kind of all over the placeness. But when we do, it is very controlled. In a, it's very controlled. And it's very intense compared to the actual Aquarian Uranian energy. <laughs> because obviously we see that in both the Paul brothers and it is, it's pretty interesting, I'm not gonna lie. Why does he get into drama like in, at the start of the year? Obviously, you know, sun squares the transit sun right on New Year's Day. Uh, and he has 10th and 12th house um, transits especially. That just mess around uh, with his, uh, you know, chart. <laughs> That's basically all I have to say. I hope I remained neutral in this video. Peace out, hug a tree. That's such an old me.